Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 21225 Sheer Force from St. Peter's, Missouri. They've had a really great season so far. They recently competed at their North League Tournament, where they went 6-0, and then were the Winning Alliance first pick, as well as Inspire Award winners. And they just have an all-around, really innovative robot with pretty much every single subsystem. So I'm really excited to jump into this. I think teams are really going to benefit from learning how they've managed to build and program such an awesome robot. And coming up on First Updates Now, this is Team 21225, Sheer Force. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, guys, let's get started with your drivetrain and just overall robot. Uh, I noticed that you guys have carbon fiber uh, panels on the outside, but it looks a little different than like the typical carbon fiber I've seen. So can you guys uh, elaborate on that and uh, talk me through what's going on there? Of course. So we laser cut uh, eighth inch polycar, uh, and then we just simply wrapped it with a single layer of carbon fiber. Um, makes it look really cool. We thought it made it look like a race car. Awesome, yeah. And so with that, were there any like structural considerations taken in place there or was it much more of an aesthetic decision? Um, it was more of an aesthetic decision. The eighth inch polycarb that's underneath it is already pretty strong, so we didn't really have to worry about uh, any kind of strength concerns there. I see, yeah. And as far as later, laser cutting polycarbonate goes, I feel like I don't know too, too many teams who do that. They usually stick to more like traditional machining methods with that. So uh, how was that process for you guys? You know, was everything good and safe and you got good results or is there anything you want to touch on there? Absolutely. So one of the main things that we did um, when laser cutting it is we used its tinted polycarb. Usually polycarb uh, doesn't catch the light that's used with lasers. So but the tinted uh, aspect of it helps it to catch that light and then we were actually able to cut it. Um, but we're also familiar with CNC, CNC um, the polycarb, so you can see the quarter inch here that we use, that's not laser cut, that is CNC. So we Got changed it. up our manufacturing techniques there. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. So now jumping into your guys' intake, you know, we've seen a lot of different types of intake this season, intakes this season. I think you guys definitely have a unique one. So why don't you just walk through of an overview with it and then we'll get into the specifics. Of course. So um, one of the things that we wanted to consider when uh, designing our intake was that we wanted to be able to pick off, off the or take the pixels from the bottom of the stack. So just like that, um, it comes up there and then we grab from the bottom using these entraction stars. And that um, allows us to go to the stack multiple times uh, during autonomous without tipping it over. Once we intake, and show you here, uh, we have these slots cut out here where the pixels, they stay against the, against the ground. They don't come up into anything. Mm -hmm. And then they just quickly uh, fit right into this spot where it's ready for our arm to grab it. Awesome. Yeah. So lots of questions there. Uh, first, how how has your intake been iterated upon this season, right? What are like some of the biggest changes you've made, you would say, that really had a positive impact on your overall design? One uh, iteration we made on the intake is if you look at the inception stars down here, we used to have a four finger design, but we changed them to better pick up the pixels. Another design we had was a four-finger design with a ring around the inside, but again, we changed it to this design because it really helps I see. grab the pixels, take them in better. Yeah, and as far as the transfer goes, have you guys always just had the pixels sitting on the floor, or did you play around with any other ideas? The entire time, we uh, originally, we always planned on putting the pixels on the floor. Um, the reason we do that is because it's simpler. Um, it stops us from having a whole system that has to pick the pixels up because we knew that with the geometry of them, it would be difficult to get underneath it. So just keeping it on the floor like that uh, just saved us a little bit of space and made the robot a little simpler, and we've never had any problems with it. So Awesome. Yeah. Can, we, can we get a demo of your guys' intake? Of course. Okay. Uh -oh. All good. All good. <laughs> 
Alright. Alright. Let's see if we come up to the stack. Gotta drive forward. Awesome. Yeah, no, that that's uh that's really efficient. And so now going on to your uh transfer mechanism, you know, you said you keep the pixels on the floor, but bef- before you pick them up, uh using your deposit, what sensors do you guys have going on there? Have you found that you don't need anything? So uh on the intake here we have two sensors. Let me put the arm up here so you can see better. Um, we have two sensors right here on the intake, and those are detecting when the pixels are um, in their slot, and the arm will then automatically move down into its grabbing position. Uh, so without the drivers even doing anything, uh, when it knows that we have pixels in there, it just go ahead and moves the arm up. Um, and it also has... Okay. Right. Uh, we also, it also uses the color sensor in there, so that the lights on top of here light up according to the color of the pixels. Um, so that kind of helps our drivers with uh, pixel placement and stuff. During yeah, the no, that that's really fantastic. And as far as autonomous goes, do you use these sensors also in autonomous to inform you of when you have both pixels? Or is that like more uh, time-based or using something else? Yeah, it's the same routine that we uh, call during autonomous as we do in driver control for the auto pickup. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as other sensors during autonomous, we also have the two Husky lenses, one on the front, one on the back. Uh, so this one up here is for our teamwork detection, and the one on the back is actually used for the April tag, um, so that we can correct to the correct position on the board. Awesome, yeah. So now jumping into your guys' deposit, uh, let's first start with the grabbers or the fingers. Uh, walk us through the design there, and then we'll get into the rest of it. All right, I'll spin this around so you can kind of see here. Um, so our design, um, we grab from the inside of the pixel instead of around uh, the outside that mm-hmm. allowed us to be able to place the pixels where we want it, and then by grabbing from the inside, we don't have to worry about getting around it. So you can see this is a cam device. This one's in the open position, this one's in the close. Uh, so you, as this spins around, it expands, um, and it grips on the pixel from the inside, and it works great. And could you drop it? And yep. you can see it rotate, just like that, and it comes right off. Awesome, yeah, and you know, as far as iterations go, was this the first design you guys came up with, or it was really after uh, you know a few iterations you settled on this design? This was pretty much the first design we came up with. We've had to change the size of the little peg here and how far the cam operates, but overall that design has stuck with us pretty much the whole time. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that that's a really good example of that. And uh, another thing I have, another question I have about your deposit is I see you guys have another color sensor uh, up there between, like, between your two cam mechanisms. What is that sensor used for? So that one up there is used for dropping off at the board. Uh, so we actually made a routine where uh, the robot will automatically drive forward until it gets to the correct distance away from the board and then automatically release the pixels. Uh, so that's just so that we're not slamming into the board too aggressively and potentially knocking those pixels off. And that's used in both autonomous as well as in driver control. I see. I see that. That's really awesome. And so now going into your arm and then talking about your slides, what is your arm mechanism? Is it just a a virtual four bar? Do you have something more going on there? Walk me through that. So so if you want to bring it up a little more, we can see a little better. So this is our high position uh, here, but they are belt driven. You can see our timing belts here, same uh, kind of belts that are used on 3D printers. Uh, So uh, they're raked up around and it helps it from slipping uh, and stuff like that. But um, as it does expand, um, you might have seen before, we instead of using a reverse, reverse four bar lifter, uh, like you mentioned, we have these polycarbonate arms on axon servos that rotate around. Um, they're super quick to be able to flip the pixels. Mm-hmm. And so, with that, so do you have any? mechanism to adjust the angle at which you deposit or is it just like a fixed ratio always um it's pretty much fixed um the arm you can see if you come around here from the side um you can see it's up at a 60 degree angle to Mm -hmm. be able to match um the angle of the board Mm -hmm. so uh, we don't really have to worry about changing the angle or anything like that because it's just consistently right where it needs to be i see and when you flip back in it's again at the right angle to pick up from the pixels 
Exactly. It comes straight down right where, right where it belongs. I see. And so with that, have you guys had any issues, like, when the arm itself is rotating, uh, how, like, the angle of the pixel interacts with the space inside the robot? Like, has that ever caused any transfer issues where you have to redesign components, or has it been pretty smooth uh, for all of that? I mean, it's been we haven't encountered anything. Most of it uh, has to do with our automated kind of software thing we control the whole robot with. Mm-hmm. Uh, single buttons so as yep. it comes uh, down it has set positions um, and set timings that allow it to uh, not collide with anything but that just kind of happened through testing at the beginning of the season i see i see and yeah another question i have for you guys i see on the inside you have like a, a really large spool holder like a li- really large uh green oh, yeah. 3d print what what's going on there so that is our uh, wire management system for mm-hmm. our robot this year uh that's brand new but this timing belt here, um, it runs all the way up the length along the slides. And then as it comes down, it's, it's not powered or anything. It just automatically spools in. And if you want, you want me to go like to me. Sure. Okay, wow. Yeah, that, that is really cool. Yep, it helps our wires from getting tangled and... But a new ad this year it's worked yeah. great. And so, you know, last couple things I want to focus on are the end game. As far as the hang goes, do you just use your same linear slides as you do for the rest of the game, or is it a different mechanism? So what actually happens is, if you look, we have a badge reel, like you would find at an office badge, and then we have the 75-pound fishing line. The robot drives under the rigging, and these hooks detach as we pull oh, the Oh, awesome. Down. Yeah, just like that. Mm-hmm. And then it spools up. Yeah, we've got some hex core motors in here that help it spool up. I see. Okay, so you're using two hex core motors uh, to spool it up. Yep. Okay, very cool. And last question, you know, as far as the drone goes, what what's going on there? Anything special or, you know, a pretty standard design? Um, you can see it over here. I'll spin the robot around once again. Um, so right here, it's just a rubber band wrapped around a servo. The servo moves and lets the rubber band go. It's a cool. pretty simple design, but yet again, works great. Yeah, I mean, you guys just have a really, really awesome robot. So last question I have uh, for you guys is, you know, going into the Missouri-Kansas State Championship coming up in just a week or two, I think. What are the plans there? You know, is there anything you want to tell us about, or are we just going to have to wait and see for two or three weeks? Um, so most of the... Uh, improvements this time of the season is mostly just in autonomous. Mm-hmm. So we're working on getting the second cycle going. So we'll uh, start from the far side, grab from the stack, head to the board, go back to the stack, grab two more pixels, and then deliver those to the board as well. Awesome. So yeah. That's the, that's so, goal, yeah. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. You know, good luck for your guys' state competition. I know you guys made it to the world championship last year. So hopefully we'll see you there again this year. And uh, sure Force. Again, thank you very much. You guys just have a really, really awesome robot. I think there's a ton of mechanisms that the community can learn from, in, uh, implement into their own robots and improve, and it's just always awesome to interview a team like this. So reporting for First Updates now, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 21225, Sheer Force from Missouri. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply.